All right, guys, nothing to worry about. Crisis averted. Everything's going to be totally fine. Markets are saved. We got the cure. It was all just a bad dream. How to take, wait. take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, water. man. You ain't hey. got the answers. Hey, guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I got a bunch of notes and a bunch of things to talk about. So I'm just going to start rattling off and we're going to go from there. You already know the deal. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your time, your precious time, which you could be doing. Yeah, I don't know what the hell you're doing out there. Um, instead of that, you're hanging out with me and my horse. So without further ado, let's get to it. As you guys already heard from the beginning intro part of the show that, uh, you know, everything's fine. Um, they keep, that's what they keep telling us, right? You know, we keep seeing evidence of uh, videos of empty hospitals and uh, and a bunch of other evidence out there that everything is fine when it comes to the medical front. I know, I know, we're seeing other things. We're seeing, uh, you know, other media outlets out there saying the complete opposite, that things are getting worse. But we seem to be getting even more um, independent media out there that's uh, showing us uh, that things are, seems to be okay. Not just in the US, but in, around the world. Also, I mean, did you even look at the the stock market the other day again we're back in the green you know we're back into the the bull market right i mean we just got uh the jobless claims again the other day we were down to we we're up to like 6.6 .6 million probably closer to like 10 million but again you know if we really do the, the math you know let's do some uh some corona math you know it's not that bad it's not that bad you know what i mean like right what's a big deal you know what i mean it's only you know, what's 10 million, 6.6 .6 million, whatever, out of uh, 300 plus million, 350 million. Nah, it's not that much. It's just a, a dent. It's barely anything. Um, in fact, um, you know, we're starting to see a bunch of people already starting to push back, you know, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. Uh, you know, they're just uh, defying orders by, uh, you know, going to the park, you know, by walking outside. And, um, and in extreme cases, just going back to regular life, you know, just depending on where you are. But, you know, we're also seeing a bunch of pushback depending on where, you know, around the world as well um, from authorities um, that want everyone to remain indoors and remain under, you know, quarantine and stuff like that. Because, again, there's no reason to step out of your house. Everything's great. The economy's great. Everything's great. Stay indoors. I mean, you're about to get a fat check from the government, super fat check from the government, so that you can stay at home and, uh, you know, order more Amazon and uh, buy more Netflix and, uh, you know, throttle your joystick, right? And order a Pizza Hut. Because again, we already know that those are the only places that are open, right? Places like Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Burger King, and the likes. But in all reality, in all honesty though, um, we are seeing a little bit of pushback. At least here locally, I'm seeing some pushback. I'm also seeing videos of uh, pushback where people are uh, starting to have enough um, or just uh, straight up defiance. And uh, yeah, you're gonna see your straight up, uh, you know, other host of actors that are saying, uh, how dare you, how dare you uh, define the, you know, this uh, medical order to stay indoors and all this stuff. But, you know, we're now starting to see, you know, early uh, results from the Sweden model of how they're dealing with um, the coronavirus over there and how they're dealing with the coronavirus in Sweden is that they're not dealing with it. They're just letting people, you know, they're dealing with it just like they do every other cold and flu season. You know, um, a really hard, heavy cold and flu season. They're just telling people, you know, the, the usual. Wash your hands, be careful. If you, you know, the, the, the disease is out there, you know, don't be getting a cold. If you got a really bad cold, don't go to work, stay home, et cetera, et cetera. You know, again, you know, you remember, you remember how things used to be back when, you know, this thing was just a regular code, cold, cold. Anywho, I digress. So, you know, we're starting to see the early um, models, the early results, you know, from that model of uh, what they're doing over there. And uh, it seems like everything's coming out pretty fine. Even in a place like Mexico, um, we're getting a bunch of mixed results because, you know, in a place like the Yucatan, you know, here where I live, where I am right now, um, they're doing massive uh, lockdown shutdowns like they're doing in some cities around the world. And in other parts of uh, Mexico, they're not doing anything at all. And we're not seeing anything at all. Again, all right, everything is just pretty normal. 
And again, you know, I, I keep hearing people all the time, you know, in fact, I was hearing that a lot today. He's like, oh my God, the numbers are blowing up in Mexico. Things are going crazy in Mexico. And I looked at the numbers and it's like, we have 200, no, not even, not even, I'm sorry, it was less. It was 175 deaths, okay? Like, I think like 2,000 cases. Come on. And by the way, like a lot of people tested, but again, there's no need to get tested. There's no need to anything. Just stay home. Get, it's not a big deal. Come on now. You know, let's say, you know, again, 175 people um, dead out of uh, 125 million. I think that's um, beyond outstanding. Okay. But again, guys, as uh, we're all aware of now, um, we've been seeing plenty of videos um, online of all kinds of individuals out there that are going to the doctor and um, they just go to the doctor and they're, by the way, there's a bunch of videos out there. I'm gonna see if I can find some of these as I talk, but a bunch of videos of, uh, you know, this one lady went to the doctor, she said, hey, I have some of the symptoms, blah, 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 and now, and the doctor stepped out and then came back with um, a, a, a sheet pretty much diagnosing her with COVID and she was losing her f fucking ass because she's like, what do you mean? I didn't even get a test. How the hell can you diagnose me with that? We're starting to see a bunch of people out there that are taking care of older people and um, they're getting sent do not resuscitate uh, forms. So again, let's just say that you're taking care of grandma or you're taking care of someone or you are um, the legal guardian or the legal caretaker. Um, and especially if you're incapacitated yourself, you know, we're seeing a lot of people out there starting to get, you know, a bunch of do not resuscitate forms. So for example, I would probably be getting do not resuscitate forms from like my aunt, my grandma, my mom, you know, things like that. What the, what the hell? Why would I even be getting that? That's, that's something you don't even get unless, you know what I mean? Like the, the circumstances are beyond uh, extreme. But now they're just handing these things out like candy and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I can go on and on about that, but again, you know, one thing that I really wanted to talk about, what I really talk about out here more than anything else is about the economy. I mean, again, as I was bringing up earlier, you know, the economy is totally fine, okay? The economy is, you know, again, as you guys can see, you know, we were basically at the all-time high of 30K. We were a few points short of the all-time high of 30K before this virus came in here and infected the markets, the healthy markets, and they destroyed the markets and brought them down to its knees. Not really. I'm all the way down to, you know, around 18K or something like that, 18, 19K. And from since then, you know, ever since since, uh, since then, the, um, the Fed, you know, not only have they taken over the Treasury and also taken over the government, but they've also, um, you know, done a bunch of awesome measures by printing trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars and pumping it into the markets and, uh, you know, giving a few pennies to the people and uh, giving a few trillions to corporations and then giving these corp these corp and then also putting trillions into the stock market and so on and so forth, thus inflating the markets. Because again, um, we all know that um, when everyone is at home and the whole world economy is at a frozen standstill that, you know, this is really what makes uh, the stock market and the Dow go up because everybody's at home day trading, right? I mean, that's the only explanation. Everyone's at home day trading right now. And because of that, all listening to Mad Money, Jim Cramer, and because they're doing that, well, I mean, that's why you're seeing these all-time highs, right? Anyways, so you already know the deal. I mean, I don't know if you are you can tell I have a little bit of sarcasm in today's episode. Uh, I hope a lot of you guys caught a lot of it or are catching it. But yeah, guys, I mean, honestly, you guys already know what's up. Um, we thought that we were going to be hitting hyperinflation. You know, we thought that this is the death of the dollar. You know, we thought all these fucking things. In fact, a lot of people still think that out there. But, you know, we're starting to see that it's not the death of the dollar. There ain't going to be no hyperinflation. All right. And um, that pretty much they've got this son of a bitch under control. Straight up communism style. All right. Meaning that they control the markets. Okay. Because you guys already know there's no economic activity around the world. And the future projection of economic activity is negative all right for obvious reasons but yet but yet you're seeing the stock market pump higher and pump higher and pump higher again it's all these people at home buying you know what i mean buying the stock market all these new day traders that are showing up all over the place right anywho so 
you know, we're seeing a lot of that, all right? And um, what, that's gonna sh what that's showing me, what that's basically telling me, what's telling everybody out here, is um, that we're not gonna be seeing any hyperinflation anytime soon. Now, we are, we are gonna be seeing hyperinflation, all right? We are gonna be seeing, you know, um, again, you know what I mean? Like Bitcoin get to 100K and above, you know, gold and silver get to astronomical numbers. We're gonna probably most likely see a brand new world currency, whether it's a brand new dollar or not, but it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Right now the world, okay, is getting flooded by dollars, all right? Basically, every single country right now around the world is getting a bunch of free dollars. And even though all these countries never wanted to use these dollars or are trying to eliminate these dollars, well, a good majority of these countries know that these dollars are still worth something and um, they're getting a bunch of them, so they're gonna use them. And uh, once they stop getting those dollars and once they start you know, once they stop using them because there's no more dollars to use, then at that time, I think then we're gonna start seeing the real crash of the dollar in the economy. But for the time being, I don't see any big changes. Uh, because again, even in a country, I see, that I see a lot of things just living out here in a country like Mexico, because even in a country out here like Mexico, you know, we're seeing the devaluation of the local currency. You know, we're seeing that the local currency, again, you can buy less, okay, with the same amount of money not just here, but pretty much all over the world. But it, yet, it's um, people are not being as affected. Oh, sorry, I kicked the camera there. Anyways, but people are not being as affected by it here um, and other places around the world as um, one might think. And a lot of it has to do with oil, all right? And um, staying on Mexico for one minute, um, you know, Mexico um, basically um, now joined the other OPEC countries and said that they're gonna start cutting production. Now. What does that really mean, okay? Basically, again, I think that they're gonna start cutting production on the world stage, you know, meaning that they're gonna cut production, per, you know, production that they would normally be exporting and selling, and they're gonna, you know, keep using that oil that they're pumping out of their country and keeping it as stored, you know, stored oil, you know, they're gonna use it, and, you, and use it how? You know, again, by keeping prices of gasoline suppressed in this country. And that's how a country like Mexico and others, you know, would be able to fare well because um, while other things are increasing in price, other things are decreasing in price. And in, in a sense, if you keep the price of oil extremely low, that can benefit a lot, okay? Benefit the, the country a lot. So I think that that's what a, what a country like Mexico and Russia and other countries are doing, okay? In order to protect themselves, in order to hedge, them, hedge themselves against the, the incoming hyperinflation of the dollar. Now, this hyperinflation of the dollar is coming, and um, but you're not going to see it right away. In fact, what's what I think is going to start happening right away, I think that the uh, world economy, the U.S. economy, is actually going to start, in a sense, well, the U.S. economy is going to start recovering at some point. You know, once everything uh, kind of just starts going back to normal, I think a lot of people, you know, they're going to be totally fine, you know, cashing that $1,200 check or whatever it is um, and staying at home and doing absolutely nothing and not going to that shit job that they hated anyway. And they're going to probably start, you know, becoming entrepreneurs. They're going to start figuring out, um, you know, what they really want to do with life instead of flipping burgers and so on and so forth. And then you're going to see a, a, then a huge influx of immigrant workers. They're going to now stay, start taking that, their place for lower wages, okay? The same thing that always happens, over and over again. And that's gonna keep the cycle going just a little bit longer. That's something that I really do think is gonna definitely happen, for sure. Um, but, like I was saying, you know what I mean? We're starting to see a lot of pushback around the world because, again, a lot of people need to eat. And um, some these leaders, all right, at the top, you know, they're basically saying, well, why can't they just eat cake if they're hungry? And that's not gonna fare too well, all right, for too long. All right, but that's something that's definitely down the pike. So again, in the US, you know, they're getting cake, you know, um, in a lot of senses. And so, yeah, in a lot of places, you know, that $1,200 isn't enough, but all of a sudden now, you're getting that money from the government and you can just get some crappy shit job under the table, then you'll probably be doing pretty good, or at least better than you were before. All right, you're gonna be seeing a lot of that as well. I think they're gonna be seeing a lot of changes, you know, so many changes in the way that we as Americans live our life. We as uh, you, world citizens start living our lives. We're gonna be seeing a lot of crazy changes. But I think that for the, even for the, for in the long run, I think that things will probably be, things will probably be okay. I know I talk, and again, 
<laughs> this is a very optimistic episode here, all right? Because I know that I sit here and I talk about the fact that, hey, the U.S. is turning into communism. Listen, in my opinion, the U.S. has already been communist for a long time, okay? But whatever. Um, that's just my opinion, you know? Like, you know, now what they're doing with the, the Defense Protection Act and uh, medical martial law, you know, again, they're just putting into effect things that they already had into law and they were already putting into effect on a, on a minor scale. Now they're doing it on a major scale, on a large scale. Okay, but um, you know when I talk about the fact that you know the FEMA camps are coming, you know that uh, you know the U.S. is you know is all downhill from here and all this other stuff. You know the reality is is not not necessarily not really the U.S. has been in a very very slow decline for decades. Okay, for a very very long time, and um, yeah, you know for anyone out there that's been looking at this for a very long time, you know as much as we think or look at the situation thinking that this is all going to be it, it's going to end now, there's not going to be any more, blah, blah, blah. The reality is that most likely this is going to be around, you know, for a long time. And what do I mean by that? Again, um, you know, the dollar still has a, a ways to go. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, there's still not enough poor people in the U.S. There could be poor conditions, all right? There's still a middle class. The middle class has not been fully disseminated. Um, the dollar, again, is still in full use. You know, now the Fed has become the world central bank. Henceforth, dollarizing the world. So we have, yeah, we the petrodollar is no longer a thing, but now just it's just the dollar. All right, like that's it. You know what I mean? Now it's just the dollar. What the fuck are you gonna do about it, country X? Exactly. And so, you know, if all of, if a lot of these conditions you know remain, you know, meaning that. Um, you know, as we get over this coronavirus thing, the only thing that we got out of it, we the people, most of the people out there, the most, you know, what most people are going to get out of it is that they're going to lose, again, every country included, they're going to lose more rights, all right, all willingly, by the way, all right, shout out to that guy out there driving his car, defying fucking law, mother, that's right, but anyways, Rage against the machine, baby. Anyway, so, you know, basically the only thing that's going to happen here is that the poor are going to get poorer. Middle class is going to get poorer. High class is going to get poorer. And then that 0.01%, they're going to get richer. Like, they don't need it, but that's just what's going to happen. On top of that, like I was saying, everyone's going to be losing more and more rights. And again, not that 0.01%. They don't lose any rights. In fact, they don't, they don't have the same laws and, and rights or whatever the fuck that we plebes do. But everybody else, 99.99% of everybody else, yeah, you know, we're all fucked. You know what I mean? Again, we're losing more rights, more liberties. You know, now, um, not only can they just take your property, take your land, take your N1 whatever the fuck mask, or take your store, all for the better of the country. You know, but they're also, you know, in fact, they can now arrest you without even telling you why they're arresting you, just because they want to arrest you. And again, you know, don't be taking my word for it. All you guys gotta do is just look up the Defense Protection Act, okay? It's something that was passed a couple weeks ago um, under the medical martial law emergency that was uh, declared by our president. And on, right there, you can read it all for yourself. It's all there. It's not nothing. It's not WikiLeaks. It's not you know secret or hidden or anything like that. All right, it's all there. So you can take a look for it yourself and uh, make up your own uh, mind on it. And uh, you can even look at other YouTube videos or other individuals out there, you know, um, dissecting this piece of uh, legislation, this new act, whatever. Um, you know, talking about it, dissecting it really, you know, uh, showing you what's going on in case uh, the language is a little bit too difficult for you to learn, for you to understand. So again, guys, you know, that's, that's right, you know, right, that's already happened. You know what I mean? We're already under medical martial law. You know, all of this, you know what I mean? Just like other events in the, in our past, you know, um, in the U.S. past, you know, this is just a tactic for you to look here but don't look here okay look at this stuff you know emergency emotion you know you're hysterical you're going crazy and don't look at what's going on with the economy don't look at what's going on with the rest of uh the world don't be looking at anything else just look at again what we want you to look at <laughs> ah. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah guys as I was saying they want you to focus on something else and not focus on what's really going on so look let's just take it back to September 11th all right let's just take it back to September of 2001 you know the day before that tragic situation that we had in New York what happened all right we had our government pretty much say hey we lost one point something trillion we lost 10 trillion I don't know they said something about the Pentagon losing again because I think it was like one trillion or something like that but again look how little that looks in comparison to what you, what what they're doing now but anyways you remember the day before that happened and if you don't now you know um, they announced that they that the Pentagon just lost like one or two trillion dollars the next and then you know again as people were trying to process that the next day 9-11 all right and that's basically what happened right and we have so many things like that over and over again throughout U u.s history before that after that and right now and so on and so forth it's it's a it's a tactic they use all the time so it's the same thing they're using they're using the propaganda okay of this virus of this disease in order to get everyone in panic to get everyone to focus on that and not focus on the economy and then as the economy is cratering as the economy is doing things that don't make any sense people are not even focusing on that because they're too busy on not dying from this thing from the invisible enemy which would get you at any minute right and so as people are so crazy worried about that just like back then they gave up a lot of their freedoms, you know, just like when we signed away the Patriot Act and all many, so many other things that came after that. It's the same thing. You know, we've done the same thing, you know, again, with the Defense Protection Act and so many other things that have followed and, have, and are going to follow and are in the process of uh, we're going through them right now. I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, history repeats itself over and over again. So, you know, back to what I was saying there, you know, everything that's going on right now is just a, a, a distraction from what's really going on. You know, everything right now with this, when I call all this stuff propaganda, I'm not saying that, you know, this, not, this thing is not killing people. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that this thing isn't a bioweapon and most likely, uh, you know, being used uh, against us and we're using it against others. That could also be happening. You know, the whole thing with the towers and stuff like that, those uh, 17G towers, you know, that whole freaking thing again. I'm not saying that. I don't know. I, all I'm saying is that, hey, you know, all this stuff is right in front of you, man. It's up to you to believe it or not. And, and there's a lot of people out there that are choosing to believe this this lie, this, this insanity of the virus. You know, all they got to do is just compare numbers. But again, you know, just like back in 9-11, um, if you were one of those few people that just questioned the narrative, questioned anything, you were, I mean, you were uh, Benedict Arnold for crying out loud. You know, you were a traitor. How dare you question anything? And so, you know, we've learned a lot from then. And so now people that question aren't silenced as much, but we're seeing the, the again the, the the pattern repeat we're seeing anyone that's even questioning the narrative or even coming close to i don't know going outside without a mask or washing their hands or whatever i mean they're looking at us like we're the terrorists like we're the when when again the, the terrorists are the government entities that are perpetrating all of this the you know the banks the people in power the guy driving that bus no. <laughs> but I mean, basically, that's it. They're, they're using this propaganda, all right, in order to have us fighting within each other, have us lock our own selves in our home, have us go into full panic mode so that they can do what they want. I mean, it's, like, it, it's not like they weren't doing what they want anyway. But again, you know, this is, again, another way in which they can keep messing with us and fucking with us and, and everything. You know, they're, they're all forcing the whole, they're forcing a good, like, pretty much the whole world is under house arrest. And there's so many people out there of all um, levels of intelligence and wisdom 
that you know are, are buying a lot of this trash i mean it's, i mean seriously i mean just look at some of the numbers and look at what's really going on out there and uh, a lot of people can figure this out very quickly that we're all being lied to that we're all being uh, manipulated that we're all being uh, you know led to slaughter like sheeple but what's going on is that you know even you know there's a lot of individuals like me and you guys and us out here you know that we have already started to lose a lot of faith in humanity because of the sense of like you know we see something crazy like this happen and yet nobody nobody has the is willing enough to fucking uh, uh to question any of this in fact they keep to blindly following it so many people that were always questioning all of a sudden now are falling into the trap that you know we're all under um you know we're all under the well we're all under you know, we're all about to start dying from this crazy disease that's killing everybody, you know what I mean? Which is not really killing anybody. And that's the thing, you know, we're all being, so that's what I was looking for, we're all being held hostage, okay? By this fake invisible monster that is being put in our brains. Because again, guys, again, I'm not denying that this thing, okay, this corona thing isn't real. I, again, it's real. It's killing people. It's a thing. You know, just like the flu is a thing. Just like, uh, you know, um, bronchitis is a thing. Just like so many other diseases that kill people every single day are a thing. It is a thing. And, and a lot of people out there should be taking it seriously. All right? People with compromised immune systems. You know, people that are extremely overweight. You know, people that, <clears throat> you know have a very, very uh, low uh, white blood cell count. And, uh, and others that have uh, diseases that, you know, again, uh, my father, all right, before he passed away, you know, he had a heart transplant because of that. He had a low white blood, white blood cell count. And anytime anyone would have a cold around him, it would, he would catch it and it would turn into bronchitis like that, okay? So I, that, that, you know, my dad would probably be, if he were alive today, he would probably be somebody that would have passed away from this disease. Probably. You follow? All right. So that's the thing, you know. And so, yeah, we see all kinds of people, you know what I mean, that you see them being perpetrated on the news as uh, very healthy individuals, young individuals, and they die from this thing. But it's like, you know, how many young individuals die from the cold and pneumonia and all this shit all the time this the, the hypothermia you name it and so you know it's all of these things why can't we use our brains you know why all of a sudden i mean is, is it that we you know why i'm gonna tell you why it's because we are in such panic we are in such a, a moment of desperation that we don't want to believe our own sensibilities, our own gut, our own instincts anymore. And we, you know, give that off. We relegate that to a government entity that knows better than us. And that's what we do. We stop believing in ourselves and start, start believing in some other group that which we already know doesn't have our best interest in it. And we already know that these individuals are, are, are manipulating us and playing us and not doing anything, you know, worth, well, I think a lot of us do, but the majority is that we are realizing right now, again, we're realizing, again, this is like the dark realization of everything that's going on, is that we, we actually thought, because of the internet, we actually thought because of a lot of things, that, you know, we are already starting to wake up and there's a huge movement and there's a lot of us that are not going to be taking this anymore and we're on the verge of fighting back. But, you know, the reality is that we figured out really quickly that we're all just a bunch of sheeple. Not all of us, but a good majority of us. And uh, even the ones that aren't, we, we turn into sheeple because we've got nothing else to do. You know, what I'm doing here is, is you know, my act of defiance. You know, I go out, I don't wear a mask. I don't, you know, do anything like that. But then even so, when I'm out and about, I have to be a little bit more careful when I'm talking to people or interacting with people and things like that. And again, it's not because of me, but now I have to change my behavior just like you got to change your behavior because out of respect for others that are wanting to be sheeple. Because if you don't, then you become the leper. You become the outsider. You become the, you know, the whole thing. And unfortunately, we're human. Unfortunately, we live in communities. Unfortunately, we need to communicate with ourselves, with each other. And so that's, that's the thing, you know, a lot of these individuals that are in high power, all right, a lot of these individuals that control all these narratives and control everything that's going on, they know about, more about this stuff that I'm talking about, the deep human psychology than any, any one of us out here could dream of. Okay, so they know exactly what they're doing, exactly how people will react, 
how to get people to move from again just again that's what we, we work that's why we're called sheeple that's why people out there are called sheeple because it doesn't it doesn't it only takes one wolf to move a ginormous pack okay and that's it and if there's one sheep that defies the black sheep it usually doesn't end well for that one sheep you know what i mean and and you know unfortunately that's a reality of it now you know in, in moments like this there's more and more black sheep out there and a lot of these black sheep eventually start making more noise and eventually they start overtaking the pack whether it's a wolf pack or the sheep pack or both packs okay and and eventually that's what kind of what happens but right now you know the the dark sheep uh, population is still pretty low and um it's mostly white sheep and we need to figure out a way to you know wake the, the masses up and um, again, you know, the, the crazy thing to me and to a lot of people out there is the fact that we're going through what we're going through right now and nobody is woken up. You know, everyone is still there like, please take my rights away. Please take everything away. Please take more money away. I'm, I know I am unhappy, but I don't care. I'm gonna, I want to be more unhappy, you know. And, and that's the thing, you know, everyone is in a sense defeated. And that's the most difficult part of this whole thing is the fact that, you know, how do we recover from this can we recover from this and that's the thing you know what i mean like we kind of can we semi sort of can but it takes time and it takes a lot of hardship you know there's this saying out there and i don't know if like i'm saying it completely right or not or how it goes but pretty much to sum it up how that's how the saying goes is that <clears throat> strong times i mean what is it yeah 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 strong time what is it? no no wait um you know sorry all right here we go here's the quote Easy times equal easy men. So easy times equal soft men. Hard times equal hard men. Hard, okay? So that's the thing. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, unfortunately, even though we have been having a hard time in the U.S. and things have been hard in the U.S., the reality is that we have had it pretty easy in comparison to a good majority of the population of the earth. And um, so far, it's still going to be easy for the, the, the typical U.S. American compared to a typical, I don't know, any other citizen of the world. And um, these easy times, these easy, you know, times in empire and civilization are creating, we're seeing that they're creating soft men. Because even the men out there that are gun-toting and they're, you know, yeah, you know, I'm going to fucking take my country back and the militia and shit like that, they're not doing any of that. You know, nothing's happening, bro. All right? Last time, I mean, I don't know when the last time we had a wake old Texas or whatever the fuck, but again, it's been a while. All right? And, um, you know, we need a lot of those all across the U.S. And again, just by saying these things, I'm probably going to be labeled uh, somebody bad, a bad hombre. All right? But that's the reality of it, though. You know what I mean? We need to push back because if we don't push back, I mean, you know, there's not going to be anything to push back with. And that's what we're starting to see, you know. Um, but again, I think that as times get harder and harder and harder and men and, and women and everyone out there gets harder, it'll be easier for us to take over and push back and do the whole thing. But in the meantime... We're just going to keep submitting and submitting and submitting, just like it happens always. Because there's a bunch of soft men out there, a bunch of a soft population. And that soft population is just going to keep taking it. Again, in a place like where I live right now, yeah, I, it, like basically, the, the more, the, the, this area where I'm at and in the north, it's a soft area. But when, you know, I was, you know, exploring earlier and I, when I saw some videos early and shit like that, but there's a lot of areas in, in Medida right now which are very hard and tough areas and they're pushing back. And just like there's, a, you know, a lot of hard and tough areas out there, all right, that are also pushing back, all right? And in a lot of cases, you're seeing either police or authorities step out or they're stepping in with force, all right? And then you're starting to really see what's really going on, you know what I mean? You know, the people in the poor communities, they just want to eat. And they're the ones that are getting the, the fucking uh, boot stomped on their face. And then they have the rich, the middle, and every other class cheering it on and saying, hey, you guys should be quarantined. How dare you want to eat? Why can't you just starve? Why don't you just eat cake? And so we're starting to see a lot of that. You know what I mean? We're just starting to see a lot of everything. And so who knows what's going to happen, all right? Who knows what's going to happen, all right? Who knows if uh, we're going to see a large uh, 
implosion. We're going to see a large explosion. We're going to see something. We're going to see fireworks for sure. Or not. Or not. You know, right before those fireworks, we can see the government give in. Give in. Okay, what do I mean give in? Say, okay, we're back open for business, but when you go back to your normal life, all of a sudden you got to start standing six feet apart. You got to make sure you got sanitizer. If you don't have sanitizer, you could be fined. All right? You could be uh, fired at work for not, you know, whatever, you know, having your hand sanitizer. You got to now buy with your own money. Um, and, and, you know, so many more things, you know what I mean, that you're going to start seeing, you know, being rolled out. So all of a sudden, yeah, things are going to go back to normal, but things are not going to be normal. And again, just like we were talking about in the last episode, who knows, you know, uh, Bill Gates might start um, issuing out IDs and uh, everybody might have to be forced to have a vaccination. If they don't have a vaccination, then you can't function. All right. And it's just one thing after another, guys. I mean, honestly. And, um, you know, right now, all we can really do is uh, just sit here and hope for the best. All we can really do is try to do our part, our best, in order to, you know, better the situation by educating ourselves, educating others, taking the time that you have right now to educate yourself, like I was saying before. Please listen to Mike Maloney, The Hidden Secrets of Money. Educate yourself on the, you know, on the on the real um, history of money and currency. All right, read uh, the what is it? The ah, damn it, the the creature from Jekyll Island. All right, again talking about banking, what happened in 1913 with the Fed. Um, stu study, educate yourself, learn, learn, learn the secrets of the rich, so that you will never be poor again. Because even here in my humble home, I'm a lot richer than a lot of you guys out there. And it has nothing to do, nothing to do with monetary value. All right? It has nothing to do with finances at all. Okay? So learn. Educate yourself. Take this time to make yourself the person you've always wanted to be. Take this time to really, again, you've probably already heard this, but really do it. If not now, then when? What are you waiting for? Seriously. What, for the world to end? You know, maybe that's why a lot of you guys don't want to do anything, because you think the world's going to end? The world's not going to end, guys. It's not going to end. All right? Anything far from it. All right? So, you know, what you should be doing out there is uh, getting ready so when uh, the world is back open for business, you have a starting uh, advantage, okay? You already have a, you know, a starting, uh, what is it? What the hell is it called? A starting, a start off? Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, a, a lead. When you get like at that lead, what's it called? When, uh, when you're racing against somebody and they get like a little bit of a lead or what have you. And again, guys, like I was saying, it's all about education, taking this time and using it wisely. There's a lot of you guys out there, again, that are, you know, needing this wake up call. A lot of you guys that need this wake up call because. That's all this really is. I think this is basically a test run more than anything else. And there's a lot of individuals out there that, you know, are now going to are using this opportunity as, again, as a major wake-up call and realizing uh, what's, you know, what's at stake here. That everything could change at the snap of a finger. Everything could be lost at a snap of a finger. And then what? All right. And a lot of you guys are already there. And that's the thing. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to learn from this? Or are you going to continue following the same patterns over and over again that are going to just lead you to disaster when this happens again? Because it will happen again. And it's only going to be worse. And every time it's only worse and worse and worse. So, you know, now's the time for you guys out there to take the chance, you know, to take this opportunity for you to set yourself up for success when you're coming out of this. What do I mean? You know, again, you don't have a passport? Get a passport. You don't have savings? Start saving. You don't have gold, silver, Bitcoin? Start getting those things. Okay? Um, if you live in a very, if your expenses are extremely high, lower those expenses. Start living, all right, below your means. And on all of these things, you know what I mean? Start pursuing the things that you want to pursue and start taking all this stuff very seriously. And a lot of you guys, you know, you guys use me, my channel, my my life, my journey, my everything as a as a little bit of a blueprint. 
as a way to encourage yourselves to do it. So, you know, now start doing it. If not, again, if not now, then when? All right. And um, that's the, that's like the major thing that you guys should all, you know, be, you know, realizing here. There's a major thing that you guys should all be really, you know, I mean, taking um, into account here. The fact that all of this could change like that. And then what are you going to do about it? All right. Because, you know, to me, my wake up call was the fact that, oh, shit. You know what I mean? It happened. It happened so quick. Look how look at how quickly things can deteriorate. I guess these other individuals that I listen to are right. I guess I was right. I guess blah 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 blah. So it's the same thing, all right? The same exact uh, type type of thing. You know, I'm learning from it. We're all learning from it. Um, and um, yeah, if you don't learn from something, then yeah, then it is a mistake. Then it is an error. But you know, right now um, there's still. A lot of you guys that can take full advantage of what's going on now and um, a lot of you guys have already escaped a lot of you guys have already taken measures there's a lot of you guys out there that I talk to that are either doing things like um, buying property you know um, diversifying you guys you know again you know there's a lot of you guys that are not scared at all you know they're just uh, you know just like me preparing even further okay but this thing still has a little bit left to go all right. It's going to be very, 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 very hard for a lot of people. Um, in fact, you know, I think that there are going to be more deaths, you know, coming from the economic situation as opposed to from the disease. You know, just like back during 9-11, you know, um, how many people died? And again, my condolences, my my heartfelt uh, everything, you know, to all those people that died during 9-11. But uh, how many people had died because of the economic uh, downturn? All right that was uh, followed uh, through all that. You know what I mean? How many people died in 2008, 2007 that was a result of that and a result of so many things? How many people really died, you know, in Afghanistan or, or Iraq and, you know, the Middle East and all those places out there as a result of all this, okay? I mean, people are dying right now in Yemen. You know, this thing is such a, if the United States really considers this such a humongous, crazy threat to the American people, then instead of, uh, taking care of our people why are we doing things like trying to double down on invading Iran and invading Venezuela and so on and so forth you know why are, is the United States giving supplies supplies that Americans right desperately need to a country like Israel why does a country like Israel get more money than you than any 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 other state any other any other I mean and they can go on and on so now's the time to start, you know, answering these questions, answering them for yourself, asking questions, asking questions of yourself, you know what I mean, and so on and so forth, and really figuring out what you're going to be doing. Because there's going to come a time real quick when you're not going to have any decision to be made anymore. Just like a lot of you guys out there are slowly figuring out and discovering that, yeah, you know what I mean? And it, it, right now, I mean, I don't know what could happen. You know what I mean? The whole country could deteriorate and fall straight into, you know, um, anarchy and, um, you know, straight all the way down the toilet, you know, into full, full on communism. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, it basically, it's already there. But even through a hardcore communism, I mean, look how a country like China still functions. So that's why I look at the U.S., you know, going full hardcore communism. It's like, well, it can still function, it can still work. You know, so yeah, guys. I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to really take in and um, digest, and all this other stuff. But yeah, man. Like I was, like I was saying, I really don't think that uh, the dollar's going away anytime soon. I really do think that we still have a long ways to go during this whole thing. And um, with that being said, I think I've made a long enough episode. I think I've rambled enough today. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, today's show. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to make these shows sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially during these times because I know that you guys want to see content, you want to want to hear content, you guys want me to sit here and tell you guys, you know, what's on my mind and uh, what I have to say about a lot of these things. But, you know, right now it's it, 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 it's 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 a very difficult time to be making content for so many reasons. Even though there's a lot of news to be said out there, you know, a lot of you guys are also on top of everything right now and. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, please let me know. Let me know what you guys uh, think about these episodes that I'm making. Um, I'm getting a lot, a lot of feedback. You know, a lot of you guys are loving them. I'm still going to continue making them. I'm making them, you know, long episodes. We're doing uh, 
you know, talking about more in-depth stuff, but I want you guys, I'm throwing the ball back into your court now, and uh, again, I want to ask you guys what you guys want me to talk about. If there's particular subjects you want me to discuss or talk about in future episodes and so on and so forth, but you already know what's up, okay? Um, <clears throat> I got the podcast. We got the live stream every single Wednesday at 10 a.m., I mean, at 11 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. Um, I'm also uh, on Library, on BitChute, I'm on Twitch. I'm on, again, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I'm all over the internet, guys, okay? So please check out all the links below, all right? Check me on the internet. I'm going to be here. Check me out. Podcast, just check me out. You know what's up. All right, just making content here with you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying your Good Friday. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Hope you guys are enjoying Easter Sunday. Um, hope you guys are enjoying family, the weekend, so on and so forth. Not sure when you're going to be watching this. I'm going to be releasing this on uh, Friday morning. But regardless, you know, you'll probably see another video on Monday, give or take. All right. But um, I'm also going to see if I can try and enjoy the weekend. I'm going to see if I can uh, also see if I can get some r and r rest and relaxation during these hard times because they are very hard trying times on all of our psyches and all of our brains but no matter where no matter how prepared you are no matter how you stand but regardless you know like i feel the need that i have to sit here and uh you know converse with you guys uh, at a time like this because even myself when i'm on I go online I'm, st I'm looking for content like this and I want to hear other individuals talking about things like this and so that's what I'm trying to produce for you guys and so on and so forth all right but anyways guys with that being said thank you so much for joining me today as always don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit that bell icon so you don't miss any uploads not just here check out my other channel check out all the links below and um, more importantly than anything else stay safe and stay awesome thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys mañana well I'll see you guys in the next episode Bye.